All right, so this morning I came in to uh, let the chickens out. I, I have this closed at night and latched just like that. And then there's a little hole right there that a rat has chewed in. And on the back side, I put a block of concrete. And then I put this little concrete block right up against there so that uh, he can't get in. Well, doggone it. I came out this morning to let the birds out into their pen area. This was knocked down. And so I, you know, let the birds out, gave them their morning breakfast. And then I check inside the egg brood basket blocks thing. And see those little black nuggets? That's rat poop. The rats are still getting in to my chicken pen and eating chicken food and pooping in the brood box. I need a suggestion, guys. What do I do other than set traps to eradicate rats? What do you think I should do? Yeah, I'm kind of curious. What would you do uh, if you had a little bit of a rat problem? I, you know, a few weeks ago, or months ago, actually, we... We had rats all over the place. Uh, I'll, I, and if you look at uh, some of my videos, you'll see that. I'll put a link if you want to take a look. Um, there were 13 running around in the backyard. And they were getting into the chicken coop at the time. And uh, I eradicated every single one of them. There were, you know, I, I had 13, I counted. I found where they were hiding. And they'd come out at night. And they'd sneak in. They'd grab some food. And there was... And they were in the garden shed as well, um, trying to, because they gnawed through one of the, uh, the vents, uh, the air vents. And uh, those guys are persistent. Anyway, uh, got them all eradicated, and it's been a, a number of months, and uh, now they're back. Well, there's, there's two. Uh, and there's been a stray cat running around the neighborhood, which I'm not a big cat fan, unless they are a pet of mine, and I'm caring for them, and they're you know, that kind of a thing. But stray cats, um, I don't want them around because uh, this particular one, you've seen, you've seen some video of this guy. Uh, he's nicknamed Frank. This is Frank. <laughs> I don't know why. But um, he eyeballs my chickens. And uh, it, 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 that makes me nervous, right? So I don't need him, frust you know, frustrating my chickens, making them uncomfortable because... Uh, unhappy chickens don't lay eggs very consistently, but when they're happy, so I want my chickens happy. Um, so I, I guess maybe that that cat has been doing a little bit of help uh, taking care of the rat population because I found two rats dead, one um, all by itself, um, another one where actually, I don't want to get too off topic, but one of my chickens caught a rat, believe it or not. Uh, I'll roll footage in on that. That was interesting. So chickens are good ratters. Um, and then another uh, uh, rat was caught and Frank was, you know, playing with it. <laughs> so I guess he's beneficial in that way. But uh, now, what would you do? Leave me a comment below. I mean, I, I guess it's just going to be this way until... Jesus comes back and rats are no longer a problem, but we can live as one. Anyway, it's, uh, I, I'm wearing a shell today because it's the first signs of autumn uh, here in Texas. Well, actually the second sign. But today I woke up this morning and it was 50 degrees. And I hear tell close by it was 49. Um, kind of chilly. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, gee, shooting guy. Uh it's uh, It's been kind of chilly around our parts. It's getting to be autumn. Well, keep in mind, just a couple of days ago, uh, it was 98 degrees at 11 o'clock in the morning. So it was hot. And then uh, within a day, it just kind of plummeted down to 50. And it's probably going to stay that way. Mornings are going to be chilly and uh, days are going to warm up to the, you know, the high 70s. So it makes for beautiful days and beautiful sunsets and then chilly mornings and it's nice. I, I like it this way. Fall is a nice time of year around here. 
uh, in central Texas. But uh, it's time to put on a, you know, like a little long sleeve shell thing. And I, and um, they don't pay me to say this, by the way, this is not a paid endorsement or a sponsorship or anything, but I, I got this from LA police gear and I've had it for a while and I've got a few pairs of pants and all that. Maybe I'll do a, you know, uh, a little video on, on that at some point. But uh, I do have an affiliate link. I'll leave a link down below. Perfect little um, zip them up, pull them over thing. Perfect for the mornings like this where it's a little chilly. You don't want to be in short sleeves because uh, it's uncomfortable. And this is just enough. It's perfect. Got a little zipper pocket. Oh, yeah, it's tucked away. There's a zipper pocket. Oh, there it is. Zipper pocket right there. And uh, nice. Anyway, I'll leave a link if you're interested. You can take a look and suit up. Okay, so what are we really going to do today? Um, a number of weeks ago, yet again, <laughs> uh, thank you, by the way, for all your comments and uh, your emails and all of that that comes in because uh, it lets me know that uh, we're doing things that interest you and uh, you're coming along for the ride, which is kind of what I want. You know, I, I, I enjoy having viewers um, participate in the things that we're doing as best we can. And uh, um, uh, so thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. If you're not commenting and you're not subscribing, um, consider to do so. You know, be a part of what we're doing around here. Patreon patrons, thank you. You guys take the extra step and um, help us out considerably. I do appreciate that. If you're not a Patreon patron uh, and you want to contribute to the things we do here, I would greatly appreciate it. I'll leave links and you can discover some of that for yourself and and uh, ask questions, you know, leave comments for me and I'll be happy to answer. But anyway, um, some of the comments on this one particular topic we did was with, um, got this great little rucksack here, was this uh, Firefield PPD. What's a PPD? Uh, personal protection device. It does that, man. It's a, it's a, Seven million volt uh, deterrent is really what it is, and a lot of you said, uh, "Yeah, that's a great tool, I guess, if you're in, envi in an environment that um, you need personal safety and somebody's attacking you and all that." Because that's we talked about that. I'll leave a link to this video uh, for some more details, but uh, it's not very practical um, where I am, and I'm not sure how I could use it. Well, um, I'm going to show you uh, a, I think. Because somebody left this comment, and, uh, um, and I don't want to spoil it, I want to show you. But somebody left a comment of another use for this thing, and we're going to test it out today. So let's take it to the bench, and uh, uh, I'll show you what we're going to do. That's right, folks. We're going to play with fire. Fire! Uh, now, I, I keep a rucksack, and it's my you know, first aid kit and everything, and... Probably my favorite uh, method of starting fire is this guy right here. Um, it's a little butane lighter that, um, you know, very simple little tool. Let, let me get a let me, can I get close up here? Oh, focus. There you go. And it starts fire beautifully. Okay. I carry that just about everywhere I go. Love it. Now, this this kind of little torch thing where it's uh, convenient, I guess. It's not very practical. You know, it does a great job. Uh, but it's too big, and I, and I can't fit it in the rucksack. And I don't want to carry something big like this. This is good for around the house, in the shop. Um, what else do I got? Oh, I got all sorts of stuff to start fire. Oh, here, inside this can... Um, just a little Altoids um, box, old tin, and I and I keep. Um, this is corn husk. Uh, we raise corn once in a while, and inside of here is dryer lint that has um, either, and I've got a combination of paraffin because that's waterproof, um, and then sometimes I just I spray it with. Uh, a little bit of WD-40, and we and we may be just you know practicing with this today. Uh, and then I've got this little sparky thing, which works 
Terrific. There you go. Nice spark. Ooh, that was warm on the hand. Works great. And you can start fires. So my little fire starting kit. I suggest you make something up like this. I've got another video. You can take a look and see what we did with that specifically. Uh, but today, because of the question of, is there another practical use? And another person commented and said, well, absolutely. You could start fire with your uh, personal protection device. And you can, and it's small. It's not much bigger, uh, maybe twice as big, uh, t uh, half again as big as this, which is by far my favorite, um, as long as it's got fuel. This is my second favorite because, yeah, doesn't require any fuel. Um, then I think if I was carrying this around because I needed some protection or I felt I did and I was out hunting or fishing and uh, I needed some protection because sometimes it's not the two-legged folks. Sometimes it could be the four-legged folks that give you a little bit of hassle. Good deterrent. But can I start fire with it? Well, I think so. Take a little bit of WD-40. I'm going to... Oh, pfft. knock it off there. So all I need is a... Uh, just a little bit of fuel like that and if you put this in a plastic bag it will stay moist and it won't evaporate I guess that's that's kind of the key you want to make sure that it doesn't evaporate you could use lighter fluid uh, I find this evaporates way too quickly and that's why I don't use a regular lighter in an outdoor situation because you always need to have some of this because the lighter fluid will evaporate uh, with this, this is a butane um, lighter, and as long as you keep it filled with butane, and it lasts a long time, it won't evaporate because it, it's it's airtight and uh, watertight and all that stuff. So that's why I like that. But a little bit of WD-40. Let's see. Let's see how this works. Let's get this out of the way. We'll do that. Can you guys see that? Look at that. Right away, you can make some fire really good. Ooh, kind of smoky. All right, let's put it out. There you go. Simple to put that out. Works good, right? Pretty quick. I'm going to put this down on there. Can I do it with this? Let's find out. I guess we'll turn it on. Red light means go oh it does it took a little bit but as a uh, a secondary use I guess it can start it is sparks right now the drawback of course will be you've got to keep this thing charged um, it's handy you know and just plug it in and you can keep this guy charged up So there's a, there's a practical use. Okay, so somebody suggested this could be a, a solution. Ooh, that stinks. An alternative use for a PPD. There you go. I do appreciate the suggestion of trying this out to start fire. We always love to play with fire around here. <laughs> so uh, uh, if you need one of these, I'll have a link down below. You can take a look for yourself. There's a link to the previous video of this. Um, very handy little device, I think. Flashlight, PPD, and fire starter. Uh, also, my go-to though, I gotta be honest with you, is this thing. Very low cost, um, floats, glows in the dark, and uh, starts fire just like that. Lasts a long time with, you know, a Philip of butane, uh, windproof, all of that. Although, this is windproof. The wind didn't blow that flame out. That's all I have for you guys. Thank you. If you uh, if you have any questions or any comments you want to leave, leave it down below. I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe for the next stuff that's coming up here really, really soon. Leave me a message if you need prayer. I'll pray for you, okay? Uh, shootingguy.com forward slash contact us. Leave me a message there. You can do that totally anonymous. Leave us a prayer need. Pray for you, all right? We care about you guys. We love you. Thank you for joining me today. God bless you. God bless America. May America bless God.
Uh, things I do. Uh.